everybody. It's, it's lovely to be here virtually with you today to um, go through this training. And I hope that I can make it as painless as possible for all of you. It's a very important topic, but also quite a dry one because it's, it's pure GCP guidelines and regulation. But it's important that we go through it, and we hope that through the interactive slides and the interactive nature of the webinar, we can make it as interesting as we possibly can for you. So we are going to review the overview of changes that impact sponsors and CROs and clinical investigators and sites that were made to ICH GCP a couple of years ago and what the impact of those changes are. So what we're going to cover today is a, a general welcome and introduction. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me so that you understand my background, where I'm coming from, from for this training. We'll go through the learning objectives for the training course, a quick refresher on ICH GCP, and we'll be looking at some of the influencing factors actually driving the changes to the latest version of ICH GCP. We're going to go through in quite a bit of detail what those changes are, and then just some key messages to finish with. We'll take a minute to review the learning objectives, and then we'll close. With no further ado, we will carry on. If I can tell you a little bit about myself. So again, I'm Debbie Harper. I'm based in the UK. I have about 23 years experience in clinical research, and much of that time has been spent building and leading operational departments, but also developing and delivering gold standard regulatory project management and clinical research related training courses. So I, I have a lot of experience planning and leading, monitoring and implementing clinical trials and programs, and I also have my project management professional certification. So I do work closely with Barnett on many of these kinds of webinars and, and training opportunities. So it's, it, like I said, it's great to have the opportunity today to work with you guys. And, and I, I welcome questions via the chat box and also opportunities for questions as well. So after this training, we would like for you to be able to explain the rationale of ICH GCP and the addendum, so what actually drove the addendum changes. Describe the changes that were new and updated, so what's different from the original version of GCP versus the new version. Identify the individual changes that comprise the addendum, which we'll call in this training here, you can see E6R2, and then recognize the importance and impact of the changes for the sponsor and CROs and also for the site responsibilities. So let's just refresh on, on ICH GCP. So if you remember, the first version of ICH GCP, which is termed R1, was generated in 1996. And 2016, in November 2016, was the release of the latest version of ICH GCP when generating trial data that are intended for a regulatory submission, but it does state it may also apply to other clinical investigations that have impact on safety and well-being in human subjects. And in this box here, you can just see the definition of GCP as an international ethical and scientific quality standard for designing, conducting, record, recording, and reporting trials that involve participation of human subjects. And then if we comply with E6R2, which again is the latest version of ICH GCP, it provides public assurance that the rights, safety, and well-being of subjects are protected and that are consistent with the principles and the origin of the Declaration of Helsinki. And if you remember, the principles of ICH GCP are covered in Section 2 of the guideline. And then, of course, compliance helps with um, assure the public of the data credibility that we generate in the trials. So what are some of the influencing factors that drove these changes to the latest version of ICH GCP? And we're going to review some of these now. Since the last revision of the guideline approximately 20 years ago, the scale, complexity, and the cost of clinical trials have increased. So there was a real drive in the industry to modernize GCP in line with advances of technology, complexity, and globalization, and to look at overall efficiency. How can we get 
trials done more efficiently as a cohort of stakeholders, sponsors, CROs, investigators, regulatory authorities, but make sure that we're focusing on aspects that are critical to human subject protection and patient safety, and really address quality concerns from regulatory authorities, which were raised to address things like organizations working in silos without looking at the bigger picture, addressing lack of oversight of third parties by both investigators and sponsors. And that includes not just third party CROs, but any subcontractors that CROs may use. Abilities to perform root cause analysis for issues that arise during trials and the whole quality risk management piece. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with lots of risk-based monitoring strategies that have been implemented subsequent to the release of the ICHGCP guideline in 2016. 